welcome to the Mrs. V Shift Stories. Very excited tonight because I have my friend and the inspirational Tracy McLeod Howe. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome to you. <laughs> We've just actually enjoyed a very nice meal together. We haven't seen each other for a long time. That's and right. She's a very busy woman and I mean, we both have so much to do so it was great to catch up on everything. So very excited, uh, looking forward to sharing your seven questions. Yep, go for it. <laughs> so here we go. It's uh, welcome to Mrs. Vichy's stories. There we have, and we have the lovely Rose too. Because the one thing I just wanted to mention before we get going is the Langham have this beautiful vista in here, this gorgeous pink and the rose, and very feminine, isn't it? It's beautiful. And it smells good in here. It what is that smell? Good. I don't know. We got to ask them on the way out. Well, I have to ask. It's them awesome. It's beautiful. So the first question, Tracy, is your story. Yes. It's a long story. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> what is the story? How did you get to be where you are today at and CEO of NCOS? It's funny, I suppose there's lots of bits in between and it's not linear. So originally I'm from Glasgow, was born to a couple of teenagers who worked um, in Scotland, got together, had me in a little room, you know, that my first house was uh, the size of a room with an outside toilet. It all sounds very ooh, but it's not. It's cool because eventually they worked hard. We came to Australia mm. and I've just put my neck out and had a crack at it. I think that's the long or the short way of telling yeah. a long story. I've had a crack at things where normally you might be fearful or not want to tread there. And I'm like, no, I'll give it a go. And I think that's the big thing. That's the difference. I've gone places where really I had no business going because I didn't think I had the qualifications, but I've gone, I'll try it anyway. I know she's amazing. She just does it. And you know, the one thing we were talking about tonight, which I just love, is your leadership style. And I think that really says somewhat something about you because where you've come from, there's no angst or jealousy or kind of fear around it where she actually embraces leadership in others. <clears throat> excuse me others to be their best and you know there's no fear around it and I think there's a lot of that tall poppy especially in Australia where it's like yeah if she gets too big under me it's going to make diminish me but complete opposite and because of that you've been extremely successful yeah I think what I've managed to have the opportunity to explore is leadership style so it's a thing that you learn on the job mm -hmm. and what i've been lucky to do is watch they've all actually been women but that's not been by design they've all been women where you've allowed them to be who they are while you've been their leader and they've often excelled you and that's cool because i mean the upside is that people end up looking to me as someone who's a great leader yes. like really all i did was let someone else be who they are and it's exciting. I mean, you get it by proxy. I get a lot of joy by proxy by the strengths of the women who I've worked with. And you see them charge ahead and do amazing things. I mean, on the, on the flip side, I probably expect a lot of those who I work with. So what you do is you ask them to rise to the challenge. I don't micromanage and I want to see women do it for themselves. So I'm yeah. not real good with people who go, oh, how do I do this? I'm like, well, you tell me. So yeah. I'm not I'm not a soft touch, you know, but I certainly enjoy watching the success of the women around me particularly. I haven't really had the opportunity to really see men develop and yeah. that's that'd be cool too. Yeah, I know it's funny. I'm open to it. Open to it. Yeah. Well, you never know. Because <laughs> it is it's true, it is that female I think when you're working because you only know because you're a female as yeah. well and, and how that goes. But I love that the success and I know from working in uh, doing Mrs. V shift and your incredible leadership in there was so beautiful because it was so collaborative and embracing so thank you. No you're welcome it was a lot of fun especially last year at the Langham you should come this year. Yes come this year that's yeah. right on 27th of September uh, and Tracy's going to be talking in the women's right panel. Now best advice you've ever had what is that? I think I've touched on it before, but I think the best advice is if your first reaction is to say, I'm scared at an offer of doing something, that you have to park that and say yes. So it's that idea of saying yes first and then figuring out how to fill in the blanks going backwards. And there's two things. So there's that say yes, give it a crack. 
but also the most important thing that you can ever do is, in my experience is create relationships with people and I find that the great wins that I've had in life have been because I've made pals with people and played well with others yeah as opposed to <laughs> technical well. knowledge I've got a, le a law degree and I'm not that great at the law but I'm good at getting on with people I have a huge network of friends and contacts and that's where the strength is it's about the connection to people that EQ thing is so important it's so important and I really respect I mean I have a lot of respect for particularly people who have academic qualifications as soon as someone's called a professor I'm like oh hello professor I love it <laughs> but I know my success for me and my personality type is the pals that I make that is everything yeah yeah, yeah great advice and, and I think yeah. the one thing that you do bring to those relationships though of course is integrity and you know that's a given for so. you but but yeah. that I think is an important part of it. it's not just about making connections as you actually have the integrity behind it so yeah I hope so yes of course okay so um tell me what was the catalyst for your success was there something that kind of was there a point or something that happened um, for you there's a few points in time like I say it's not linear but I do think you become successful oh, successful you, you become able to enjoy some kind of um, career progression or I guess seniority in a field mm. because you've had a hard time I think and I feel like I've been lucky mm -hmm. enough to have the <clears throat> crappiest situations happen to me I mean everything from and I'm not looking for pity, by the way, Scarlett. No, 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 no. Everything totally from family law matters to sexual assault, all the usual stuff that women have as yeah. a matter of course. Yeah. When you've plumbed those depths of crappiness, those things that the risks you take to get ahead are not that risky because you've, you've reached the bottom of the, the barrel, really. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, I'm fortunate enough to have had some really crappy things happen. And I've got a complex relationship with my mum and I think that has also made you act in a particular way and be very cognizant of how you relate to other people. Mm. So the, the hardships are actually the catalysts for strength. I love that because I yeah. totally believe it. And I think yeah. we've talked about too is that... Um, we have discussed this sort of stuff yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, and it's just totally that mm. thing that when you get to that point, because for me when we lost everything and we went through that dilemma, is I found a place in me that actually went, oh, actually, I'm not my job, I'm not money, I'm not this. And I was able to then go to another level. It sharpens your thinking, it right? Does. And it does. The appreciation is so good. I'm so grateful for everything. So, and I'm so happy all the time because it doesn't take much for me to <laughs> exactly. be happy. And, and it's funny, you often sit there going, how am I getting away with this? And it's something that is just a normal thing. Yeah, but it's yeah. because you've had really rotten things happen. Yeah. You yeah. need the rotten, I really believe this, the rotten stuff makes it okay to achieve because it balances out. I would hate yeah. to be born with a silver spoon in my mouth and for everything to go well. Well, it's funny because the workshop, which I don't think you've been to, one of the, the ones that I do around is about finding in the shadow self the parts we don't like or we don't want to look at is actually our goal. And that often comes out of those you know, hardships or things that we don't yeah. want to face is if we look at those parts and embrace them that has given us a gift, I think is, um, is quite well. Love that advice. Thank you very much. <laughs> love, love. It's funny um, you're asking me for advice. <clears throat> <laughs> Always. Yeah. Now, what it's very kind the, of you. Of course. What was your greatest tool for challenges? I think it's around the self-talk. Yeah. Stuff is really important. And I think it's a muscle that you build. When I think back to me as a young woman, and I, you know, I think right back to, so I was born in Scotland, worked in Marks and Spencers as a teenager, <laughs> and I always remember Mrs. Chesterman <clears throat> berated me. She was like this big, booming, this is my memory of her, big, booming woman who was like a team leader within Marks and Spencers, actually. <laughs> and she, she like scared the shit out of me, and it got me very you know viscerally upset that she was booming and telling me off and I think of me as that kid at 17 before I came to Australia just months before I left for Australia and it's around the resilience muscle that you build yeah and the tool for success is that the Mrs Chestermans 
or whoever it is that's going to be on uh, Twitter telling you you're a bastard or you're you're not a real feminist or you're whatever it is it's building that muscle to actually push it away that makes you strong yeah, yeah. because I tell you what it will not stop <clears throat> and the more that you achieve and the more inroads you make having impact to have real change because that's my interest is impacting real social change you're going to have a corresponding choir of people who hate you yeah, yeah and when i think mrs chesterman at the age of 17 right through to now i don't care what they say and i've got good people around me i've got lovely kids i've got a partner i've got a life outside of this and it's okay i can go away in my shell and this is all just noise I think that's such great advice because I know a lot of people who are very sensitive. I've been one of those. Yeah, people. I've been there. Yeah, you know, learning a long to time go, ago. Along, well, and learning to go. Actually, it's not real. And then how do you deal yeah. with that and use it as a tool? I love it. It's very yeah. good advice. Build the resilience it. muscle. The resilience muscle, absolutely. <laughs> society. What do you think today is society's issue? Gender equality. <laughs> <laughs> Gender equality, yes. Surprise. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. Gender equality. I think it's the time in the world, like not just in Australia, across yeah. the whole world, where we can address this. We can actually have impact and make change. I think the societal issue is around, if you go to the next layer, is around the violence that women experience through mm. systems and through men in particular just on that one-on-one -on -one relationship and the forgotten bit is the kids who are impacted by yeah. domestic and family yeah. violence and you can see i'm going right down down the bottom is the kids who have no support yeah. so for me that's the big issue the issue is the gender equality there's the issue of domestic and family violence i think men can change i have that view because if domestic violence is so prevalent those men are not all psychopaths. We can change this. We can support those guys who aren't psychopaths to behave in different ways. We can change the systems and we can protect the kids. And it's the thing about the kids that really gets in my craw. It's a societal issue. How do we support kids who live in violent homes right yeah, now? Yeah. They have no voice. Mm -hmm. It's a bit serious. No, but it's true and it is a very serious subject. It is. I mean, one thing that uh, it was interesting because I was recently asked to talk about women and women empowerment and I found myself balancing towards the, well, it's about equanimity and it's about that balance because for the men, and I know there's a whole thing coming up called the manosphere, which is how men are kind of having this underground backlash to women's empowerment, which... It's like you don't want it to seesaw there. You want to try and get some... It should be a collaboration. It yeah. shouldn't be a, a sort of jolting recalibration. Yes. It should be my sisters for too long have borne the brunt of poor systems, systems that yeah. favour me as a, a white man, actually. White men have the privilege. How do we work towards meeting in the middle so that yeah. we can work together. I'm all for the positive and working together and collaborating and not yanking the chain to calibrate. And the backlash from the men's movement, it's like, come on, guys. How That's do you, what cool. would you say to, sort of digressing here a bit, what do you, would you say to men in that front? It's like, how do you, because I can see that as soon as women come up, they then go, I'm feeling disempowered. How do you keep that balance? What would you say to a man? I think it's about, the, the community at large saying to men it's okay to be vulnerable and to actually say it's not about me personally to acknowledge that women have had the the raw yeah. deal and that's the issue because I think what often men go straight to is defensiveness yes. yeah, but that's not yes, me that's and that's not happens. fair and yeah. how come her and that's not I am not a violent man and that's not a way to approach it we don't do that about breast cancer we don't say no. breast cancer is occurring and all of a sudden men go, oh, well, that's got nothing to do with me. And it's the same with domestic and family violence or systems that favour men over women. We need men to actually say, I want to be with you, sister. I want to be part of this, which is what it's exciting to me. I think the most masculine, amazing type of man is one who can get behind the feminist movement and can say, I want to see my sisters have equality because that empowers me. I love that. That was so good. It's that was true. so good. And it's true. And I think that is that your analogy on how that works is right on. Thank yeah. you very much for sharing that. Um, teach me something I don't know. 
job. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Don't teach me something about because you're in the sector of really about women's rights and helping, um, you know, in social services and. Oh, I know. Something. I know a thing. So I, mean, I don't know if you don't know it. You no, may, I may or may not know it. it. But I think what people don't realise is that the concept of poverty is prevalent where you don't even realise. Right. So I, th I think what we see is poverty and inequality is something that is around people on Centrelink benefits, who live in particular suburbs, Actually, poverty permeates through the whole community. Right. Inequality, disadvantage permeates the whole community. And you will see poverty and inequality next door and even in your own family where it's kept secret. And what I'm really interested in doing, and I think there's opportunity for those of us who don't realise, is to reach out to our neighbours and our sisters who we sit next to on the bus, whatever it is, to, to connect as community again. Because I don't think we realise the pain that people are in because of stupid things like money in a rich country like Australia. It's, it's scary. I've just had a friend whose sister's um, committed suicide and, you know, it was for money she'd lost her job and it was just, people are so close to that despair yeah. that we don't realise and they don't talk about it. You know, no. a lot of the time they don't feel hurt and, and um, everybody's so busy and they're also coping themselves. Like everybody's there's in. There's a lot of pain and there's a in lot the of pain and a moment. lot of isolation. Yeah. There's something that is happening where we're fragmenting as a community. Yeah. And what I hope, and I'm not teaching you something you don't know, you know this, mm. but there is more and more this idea that you have to find your own way and you know lean in and pull up your bootstraps and get on with it. And the forgetting of the fact you live in a community that we live with other people who we have to lean on in order to be whole. It's true. It's funny, um, you know that I'm uh, announcing a new platform, Mrs. Beehive, which is all about supporting community. Yeah. And I love the, the bee aspect, because of course the bees are very important, we can't survive without them. But did you know that when a bee doesn't have its hive, it dies within 24 hours? No, mm. I didn't know that. So it is... A bit like us. <laughs> a bit like, yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that that's... That's how important community is, and we don't realise that we're one organism, actually, all of us, yeah. and we need to recognise that. And a lot of the time, we feel alone. And I think, um, I think that's coming out too. I think you'd agree. People are now focusing on that. We see that, that. Like. when in my organisation at NCOS, we go around the state and we meet with communities, rural, yeah. regionally, in the cities. But it doesn't matter where you are. Community connectedness comes up as a key issue, particularly for young people at risk of homelessness, kids yeah. who live in violent homes, if they're connected to their community, they have a plan B or a support network in place. Yes. If there is no community connectedness, if there is no beehive, if you like, they're screwed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and it's I really like my important. own company, don't worry. But that's not the point. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say that with the sense that like, I can be on my own, but I now have access to but you've been through that people. process of, yeah. so there's there's kids out there and people who don't know yes. how to do that. So it's really important to reach out. It's I that think thing that's around important. the Monopoly game, we don't all start with the same amount of dollars and that's the oh, thing. Yeah. You know, and I didn't think of that. That was, it's actually it's a very documentary, good. but it's oh, true. It? Wow. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very relevant. Alec Gibney. Alec good Gibney. documentary called Park, Park Avenue. Park Avenue. There you go. There's a tip. Tell me what's the biggest shift in your life that you'd like to share? I hope my mom's not listening. Look, <laughs> I, ha I have a lovely mother. She's, she was a very strong matriarch. Yes. And she just went back to Scotland last year. And the biggest shift for me was being alone at 51. And it's wow. a good feeling. Wow. And it, no offence, Mum. <laughs> but it's true. It's, but, there's something yeah. really freeing about I run my own race now at 51. But isn't it funny? If you like all this stuff happens, and I know through my own that there's the, these incredible insights that I've had around my life and yeah. with my family and friends, actually, just certain people and things that have happened where, you know, I've found my own inner strength. Yeah. And, you know, for. You get to be free. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting because I've got kids and I wonder to myself, 
do they want to be free of me in a way? <laughs> I hope not. But it, it's that idea that I want to be connected and have those choices to step in and out of relationships with my family and community. But there is a sense of wanting to have autonomy and power and authority in your own life. Yeah. Especially as a woman. And it's really interesting to me who maybe on paper looks like someone who has a lot of power that it's only when I live in Australia and my mum is back in Scotland that I think I actually I'm powerful yes at last it's funny and that look families and I think this is what everyone f forgets <laughs> is they have a big point uh -oh. of control in our life yes. and they always will be you know like and it's hard when you when you kind of like I look at my son with me and I'm thinking I hope I'm not actually destroying some part of yeah, exactly. life. <laughs> oh, I've, I've stuffed up so bad with all of my kids. <laughs> I'm like totally thinking, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm but sorry. But that's the thing is, look, yeah. women, we give birth to guilt. And I think that's just part of it. You just go, I've just done the best I can. I'm myself, you have love, you have food over here, you know, roof over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you can do. Yeah, I That's know. all you can do. Get the margaritas up. Get the margaritas up. <laughs> Actually, we have one where I guess it's about to start. I've got my, <laughs> I've got my Cosmo ready. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Scarlett. Love talking to you. Let's get the margaritas in. Yes, let's go. <laughs> thank you for joining us and see you next week um, on Mrs. V's Shift Stories. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.